Doug Friedman. And I am Meredith Levy. And this is your mental your mental breakdown. breakdown. <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! That's right. I think there might be some hissing on my mic. Oh no, that was just me holding the S. I don't know. Dork. People say hold your tongue or bite your tongue. Hold your tongue. Bite your tongue. Both. No, nobody. Both. Oh, yeah, both. Bite it or hold it. Both. But now that's weird. Why would you say bite your tongue? I don't know. So that you don't talk, I guess. Can you hold your tongue with your teeth? Yeah. Or that <laughs> you're demonstrating <laughs> like <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Wait, can you talk if you have no tongue? I don't know, because isn't there like a Game of Thrones thing where they take people's tongues out? I don't know. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Oh, no, 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 no. That was, uh, I think that was the world according to Garp. I can't believe you just confused that with Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, <laughs> Game of Thrones, there, there's a, a whole group of people that are like uh, Khaleesi's warriors, but I think it's not that they're... They don't have tongues. It's that they don't have their genitals. Like that mm. was removed. So they're all eunuchs. So they can be warriors and fight without any emotional cloudiness, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah. But I think in the world, according to Garp, there's a whole section of people. One of them, I think I think it was Garp's mom, but I could be wrong. Or maybe who has her tongue cut out so that she can't testify against the people that attacked her. Yeah, I think you can't talk without a tongue. I think right. it's everybody right now being like, you are so stupid, you guys, because <laughs> that, now that I'm saying it, I feel like that's a given, but who knows? Also, do testicles provide emotion? I mean, is that the only thing that provides emotion is testicles? No. For a man? No. You just said so they can fight without being cloudy, cloudy and emotional. Right. But that was, that was the thinking back then. It's also why, you know, a lot of dogs are neutered or spayed is not just so that they won't reproduce, but so they'll To be calm calmer. them down. Oh, right. Ah, makes sense. Uh, my guess would be, you know, fact checker, you can get on the anatomical science of this, but that there is something about the, the chemicals, the testosterone or estrogen right. that, that our body produces because of or genitalia, but I, I don't know. By the way, I knew the answer to that because once again, I'm sounding very, very stupid. I can't believe, I can't believe that yes. you did not remember that in the world according to Garp, there's a whole group of people that cuts out their tongues in solidarity for the woman who had her tongue cut out by our attackers. How did you not remember that? Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking I about <laughs> when I... <laughs> okay, you anyway. take me literally... Why do you always take me so literally? You know I'm hardly ever serious with you. I don't know, because I take everyone literally. You know it is serious. What? Harry Potter's godfather. Sirius Black. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Pull it together. Pull it together, Meredith. This is, this I, is real work that we're doing. That was amazing. Pull it together. Okay. You ready? Okay. Okay. Yes. There is something serious here. We are going to transition now. I'm not kidding. This really is real. I know you're waiting for it, but it's not coming. Okay. So you guys are going to hear a session with Drew in a second. What you need to know is that he called me the morning before this session and he was having a lot of anxiety, a lot. It was, I would say through the roof if I were into hyperbole, but it was at the roof. And a lot of it was related to having just gone to the ER and dealing with what he thought was a panic attack or an anxiety attack, and turned out it was heart-related. I don't want to give any spoilers, but I want you guys just to understand that a lot of how we framed the session is Meredith's worst nightmare. I wasn't talking about the details <laughs> until like 40 minutes into a 50-minute session where we kind of go, oh, we haven't even talked about you being in the ER yet. Right. Let's talk about that, right? Right, right. So yes. it really was, and a lot of times this happens with clients when they come in with a crisis, we used to call it the cow, the crisis of the week. It's not about the crisis right away. You have to help them bring their anxiety level down so they can, as probably you would say in DBT, you can get into your wise mind. Right. It's all about lowering that a little bit. You don't necessarily have to meditate and take a deep breath. 
when you are having a panic attack or an anxiety attack, you are not thinking clearly at all. Right. You're thinking about survival. You know, that, that whole lizard brain kicks in and you're just trying to get through. So a lot of what the first part of the session is, is just knowing that he was just in that. And I'm following his lead on that. Right. And what I thought was so cool, and Meredith, you can relate to this because this happens to you. I would say just about every time we record, he had a technical glitch in <laughs> setting up recording. <laughs> right? So I, I saw that happening oh, and I was yeah. walking him through that before yeah. what you guys hear. And it was really cool to see him get frustrated with that because it was channeling that anxiety and that frustration into the computer into right, what wasn't right. working, right? Right. So you guys are going to pick up with the session right where he just had his technical difficulties earlier in the morning. He called me, we chatted a bit about the anxiety, about going to the ER. And now we have the session where we're literally in real time processing the anxiety that he was experiencing. I like having technical difficulties at the top of a session when <laughs> you've been having some anxiety because we get to like troubleshoot and bring the anxiety down, right? Yeah, it's a nice little win. Walking through just that technical glitch that we just had, how was that anxiety-wise or like stress-wise? How was that for you as we did that? I think it's the perfect example of like a feather and a ton of bricks. Uh-huh. And it's just like throwing like a little feather on my already carried backpack was a lot. Yep. And while it was a smaller situation, it felt like a lot. Yeah. And it's not like it was like, oh, I just want to quit and fold over and not have our session and go to bed. You know what I mean? Totally. And, but it was close. Like it was close. Well, and let me ask you this. How did my demeanor help with mm -hmm. that? Because think about had I said like, what you you can't hear me? I'm not in your ears, oh, man. Yeah. Well, we can't have a session this way. Let's can, we can do this tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's uh, it's refreshing because I don't get that a lot in my life because it's the support I've come to find that I needed in these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and kind of seeing that for myself in a real life, real example is really helpful. Because while this was a smaller issue, I can see like the right support that Drew needs. Yes. In those kind of ways. Yeah. Which is like. It's nice. Absolutely. Yes. And it's a function of you recognizing what's helpful and what's not. Right. Because you have people that mm -hmm. can be in a situation with you that is kind of tense or anxiety provoking. And if they respond in a way that you need them to respond or that's helpful to you, right. your level of anxiety goes down or at least yeah. doesn't spike up. And sometimes it means, oh, when my anxiety is spiked or spiking, I'm either going to avoid the people that I know don't do that for me or that contribute to that, or I'm going to really like set a boundary and say, Hey, I'm kind of freaking out right now. I need you to be a calming presence for me. If you're not, I got to talk to you later. Definitely. And I think that's kind of what I've been doing with girlfriend over the last couple of days, especially because I've been looking to her for some help and right. I haven't got that kind of support back. It's been a lot of fighting and a lot of like mm -hmm. crazy bullshit that I just don't quite understand that's really added a lot to a lot of my stresses. And I've kind of tried to explain that to her and what exactly what you just said of like, Hey, this isn't really helping me right now. I kind of need some time just right. to, to calm myself down and be. So that's been nice in, in being able to do that for myself. Awesome. I feel like it's just my pattern. You know, when you ask about my mom and what that support right now looks like and how shitty that is. Right. Like, it's just absolute bullshit. You know what I mean? It's just absolute bullshit. And it's pissing me. Like it's really pissing me off at this point. Yeah. It's contributing to feathers in the bricks and the stress that you take on. And then it becomes about it not being helpful and about what it is rather than what you initially were calling to get some support about. Yeah. 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 And that's essentially kind of what you're recognizing right now. What's helpful, mm -hmm. what's not helpful. I think it's very interesting that I agree that I'm aware of kind of what I see in that mm -hmm. and what's uh, helpful and not. And again, I, I think it's, I, I'm kind of picking and choosing selectively where I'm taking what I've, what's happened over the last couple of days and kind of taking it to like certain places and not taking it to other places. 
in the sense of like when it uh, first happened, I called my mom and dad. Right. I was like, hey, this shit's going on. I need help. Like, what the fuck? And initially, my mom was like, yo, I'll come down there. I'll be on the next flight out. I'm down. Let's do it. Right. Right. And I'm like, no, like, that's not what I'm asking for. Like, I, I, and I even sent her, I sent her a text. I was like, mom, I really appreciate what that is. And I know you'd be here like tonight. You know, I know you would. And like, I love you for it, but that's not the support I need right now. I don't need you to be here, here with me. I need help like that. Yeah. And we had that conversation. It was really good. I thought we were on the same page. Nice. And I thought about that too, because I don't want it to be like, hey, dad, I need to get back on your insurance. I need you to cover this. I want it to be like, hey, dad, like I, need, I do need your help as far as insurance, but I want to cover whatever is out of pocket. Because like, this is still my situation. I'm not trying to like come back and be like, oh, I need like all this help and, and I can't do it. I just need, I need the insurance right now. I, I need help. Yeah. And so she said, she hits me back. She's like, yo, I'm getting my nails done. I'll call you in a little bit. And I haven't heard back from her. And I was like, okay, like, you say you want to help and do this. And I kind of like told you what I need help with. And mm-hmm. you didn't really want to show up in that way. And like, I'm not, I guess I'm not trying to like pity party myself here. And like, she's not showing up the way I want her to. Like, she's still showing up in her own way. It's just not how I wanted it right now. And it was on, on the exact flip side of all of this. I called Brent this morning, crying, saying what I did with you. And I'm like, yo, I need you. Please come over. He's like, I'll be there in five minutes. And he like ran over. We had some French toast and we sat and we talked and, and we kind of made a game plan of like, hey, like, let's not freak out. Let's right. methodically think about this. You know what I mean? And I, I'm going to be like, I know I'm OK. It's just kind of like going through this and seeing the different supports and what that looks like. It's kind of it's just it's kind of eye opening. It's weird. It's different. And it's um, yeah. it's uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. Yeah. And kind of navigating what that is, too. Yeah. They're called growing pains, not growing joys. <laughs> this is what you're going through. This really is adulting, actively adulting. Right. I see four steps in, in sort of how you're handling getting what you need and what is helpful and what is not helpful. First is building your awareness. What is helpful mm-hmm. to me and what is not helpful to me? Being able to recognize it. Then it's asking for it. You called me. You called friend. Great. You called your parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The third step is sort of, am I getting it or not? Right. And with me, yeah, okay. With friend, yeah, great. With mom, mm-hmm. oh, well, uh, maybe maybe a little bit, maybe not. The fourth step is, okay, when I don't get it, now what do I do with that? Right. I think the, the shutdown version is going, mm-hmm. well, fuck it, cross them off my list. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if there's, there's a softer version of it. On the other end of that is, well, I guess this is all I deserve. Right. right. But there's, there's right. room in the middle mm-hmm. and that's kind of where you are. Where do you think the middle lies for you in just that piece? I think for me, I think it's, it needs being empathetic to kind of where they are in my situation as well. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't think my mom wants to get that phone call of like what I'm going through as well. So I'm sure she's scared to her own degree and, and I'm sure she needs some sort of reverse what I've realized in all of that is being empathetic to understanding that they're going through some shit too. Mm-hmm. Could be with me, could be in this situation, could be completely outside of the realm of what I know about. But I think within all of that, it's just, I'm not the only one going through shit. Yeah, that's true. And that, that empathy is, is wonderful. I also want mm-hmm. to make sure, and, and every, <laughs> maybe I should spend a little more time on that, that mm-hmm. empathy is wonderful, that you can see they have their own perspective, they have their own movie, you're just making a cameo in their movie. Right. Okay. That shouldn't diminish your movie to you. You are not mm-hmm. a cameo in your movie. You are the lead right. actor in it, right? right. So mm-hmm. while we can be empathetic and understand what they're going through, and they're going through something different and all that... I still need to come back to my movie. I think honestly, having having that bit of empathy and allowing it to be there allows myself to not be disappointed on the other end. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do, but explain it to me so that <laughs> we're very clear about that. I think the uh, the empathy on like my mom's end, for example, it's like, I know what you've been through. I know what's going on. So I kind of give her an asterisk. So that when it happens again, I'm not disappointed and I'm not let down. It's kind of like, I already know it's okay. Right. Kind of giving her a pass because of it. Right. 
that piece right there is what's going to let you get cut off on the road by somebody and not track them down, cut them off, you know, right, it's yeah. realizing, yeah. oh, everybody's got their own movie. Everybody's got their own stuff. Okay. Right. And I don't have to take it personally that I just got cut off on the freeway. I don't have to take it personally right. that my mom is not there for me the way I'd, I'd like her to be, which you would say to me, she's not showing me love the way I want to. She's not showing, she's not giving me what I need the way I want it. And there's still like, yeah, I'm missing that. And that empathy piece goes, okay, that's their thing. I come back to mine. I'm not getting this need met. I need to find it somewhere. There's another piece of going, all right, well, I still have this need. I need to get it met. And maybe I need to move on from this person in this way. That's the growth and that's the change. And that's often very uncomfortable for people. And we'll slip back to what is comfortable. It's partly why you call girlfriend. Yeah. She's comfortable. Right. It might be comforting to hear her voice. And it hasn't been, you know, like, because uh, we've, we've talked before this, right? Like, it's not like this is what spurred the get back no. to, you know, it's right. not like that at all. We've talked about it. It's funny we're having the support kind of conversation. It's exactly what me and her have been talking about. Hmm. What I've been kind of like begging for is like, hey, you might be calling me and you might be texting me, right. but that's not supporting me. That's not... It's not showing up when I need you to show up. I'm not asking you to drive up here right now, but I'm not asking for a, a very bland, hey, how you doing? Right. Show some fucking emotion, show some effort. And so I'm really sitting firm to what that is and being like, listen, this is where I'm at and I need sympathy and I need some I need some help in all of this, right? And uh, and just to put it contextually, right, her dad's like a nurse and works in a heart ward, yep. right? Yep. And so um, so I, I talked to him a little bit this morning, which was nice, but it took oh, two days to get to that point of me being like, yo, what the fuck? Why haven't you talked to your dad? Why haven't you asked him anything? Like, why haven't you done anything, right? And then just to kind of like flip side that of, of showing that I do have support as well in my life in that way, mm -hmm. I called my partner and I was like, he was, he was just checking on me. You know, he's like, how you doing? And I was like, ah, I'm not feeling so good, kind of emotional, kind of panicky this morning or Kind of like just being honest, right? Right. And so his wife wanted to check on me too. And she literally was like, well, who is your insurance? Can we call them for you? Maybe it's different if we call mm. them. Can we help? Is there anything mm. we can do? Do you want us to make food for you? You know, like they were like instantly were like, we got you. Don't worry about it. And it's like, um, I don't even know her. So why would she do that for you? I mean, it's just crazy that like the people that I want closest to me don't want to be close to me. And, and I feel like the people that really care about me, I always push away for some reason. I don't get it. Well, uh, we'll hit that in a second. The emotion that you're experiencing now. Yeah. Your business partner's wife. Yeah. Straight gratitude. Straight gratitude. And yeah. Appreciation. Yeah. Appreciation, gratitude. She sees you. And I feel loved. I feel loved. There it I is. I feel seen. Yeah. And we're talking about family of choice, not family of origin. Right. And I mean, you know, you friend, you take a bullet for each other without a thought. Yeah. Right. And the people that are your family of choice, the people that really have love for you, that see you, that you see, they will do that. Right. You will have that. And, and you'll have somebody going, hey, well, OK, let's get the insurance issue. How can I help with this? That idea of why do the people I love the most, why am I pushing them away or why are they not there for me? There's a pattern of wanting to get love from a certain type of person. And maybe yeah. girlfriend reminded you in some way unconsciously of your mom, of your dad, of people in your life mm -hmm. and wanting to rescue, to show them a certain thing and have that reciprocated. And, and we reenact these patterns in our life, in our relationships right. constantly, because that's what... Yeah. That's what we know. Those are the ski trails that we have until we shift things and make it different and surround ourselves with people in LA that are good people in LA. These are the people you will choose to have around you because of how they support you and how you support them. That's the reciprocity in it. Yeah. Well, and I went to a, uh, we had a team 
team barbecue last night. Hmm. Like it was all people that we all kind of come from different places and different walks of life and, and all this different shit. Right. And uh, I kind of sat back there and, and like in my whole life, I always really wanted to come to something like that with a family, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And like show up and bring my family to the family gathering. And I kind of sat back and realized that like, that was the start to what my idea of what a perfect family was. Yeah. Cause it wasn't perfect. You right. know what I mean? Right. And I was like, Oh, okay. I, I get it. That's the life that you're creating for yourself. Well, and so can we throw in some good real quick? Absolutely. I want to throw in some really good stuff that happened this weekend as well. As I mentioned, I went out Saturday night, right? Yep. And so Saturday night was the night that we launched our brand. It was Drake's party. It was like a house party. Right. I think you understand what I mean by when I say this. It was the first time I really felt like an equal to these people. Like, this is amazing. Like, I'm having a really, really good time having fun. This is great. And so Drake like introduces himself to us at that point. Right. And so we chopped it up with him too. And so I don't know, like all in all, not to say that it was cool to meet Drake. That wasn't the point of that story. The point of the story was that I felt that I showed up to a place as me in a completely vulnerable, like I wore like a hoodie and jeans. You know, I didn't stress out what I wore. I didn't stress out on how we showed up. It was so authentic and vulnerable and emotion and, and grateful. And the whole time, like, it was me and my boys and we're hugging on each other and proud of you, man. Like, it was beautiful. It yeah. Was beautiful. I mean, that, that really is, like, like you said, showing up as me authentically. Like, I just yeah. showed up and I didn't have to, like, give them anything or do anything. Here I am as me. Like, cool. And yeah. being there as an equal is phenomenal. It's recognizing where you feel like I belong. There you are. Mm-hmm. I've thought about it a lot too. And I, and I don't mean to say that I finally feel equal to Drake. Like I'm not, I'm not up there now. Right. It's just, right. I finally feel almost humble enough now that I don't have to worry about being up there. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm much happier in my lane and where I fit in and yeah. doing what I do. And, and being able to do that authentically mm-hmm. than feeling like I need to shift and go somewhere to be in front of somebody like that. He just became like a real person. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I love hearing this from you and congratulations. It sounds like a great night and it sounds like you really yeah, arriving at a place of, I was there authentically as me and I actually fit in. I didn't have to change me to fit in. I'm me yeah. and I showed up. It's pretty cool to see you walk through that and to see you experience that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. It really is you and how you want to be present somewhere. And I'm going to take a a, a left turn in a second just to say, Mm -hmm. as like the last 10 minutes as we've been talking about this, where's your anxiety level on a one through 10 scale? Um, Probably an eight. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe a nine. Yeah. So still there. Not overwhelming you. I think that I can distract myself from talking about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Absolutely does. Yeah, still feel it, still there, still very. But let's recognize that you can bring the level yeah. down. I mean, when we talked this morning, you were, like I said, 11, right? Yeah, and I think the weird thing right now, too, just so we're all like, like my anxiety is cool. It's just like my chest hurts, like my fucking heart hurts right now. Yeah, And so it's like when people ask me, it's like, I feel fine. My fucking heart hurts and like I'm scared about it. Yeah. I mean, you're more aware of it. So, of course, you're going to focus on it. Yeah. I don't think you're going to go like lift weights right now and push it. You're going to take it easy. And what I want to highlight is that the anxiety level can come down enough so that you can get some stuff done. When I called you this morning, you know, it was a lot more of like I needed to spew. Mm-hmm. And once I kind of spewed, you were like you kind of said it back to me when we were at a game plan, put like a list together. And like, now that I've called the insurance and kind of have some more information, like I feel, I feel so much better having like that kind of support in the way of like, well, this is kind of like an idea of what you should do. Not, Oh, well don't, don't feel that way. Just feel better and drink a cup of coffee and go for a walk and do, you know, right. Like I've got plenty of that, but it was like legit, like, no, like, hold on, calm down, take a deep breath call the insurance. If that doesn't happen, then we can take this, you know? So it was like a very methodical, like laid out plan of attack. Right. That 
I see my end goal. I know where I want to be, but now I have the stuff to kind of like go attack it and not, exactly. not feel like I need my mom to do it for me and still feeling appreciative when my partner, wife offers to help. Weird dichotomy. You know how I say all the time, relax, nothing's under control, right? Yeah. <laughs> some yeah. things are within our control. Some things are not. Right. And what's going on with your heart, like what's actually happening is not in your control. Getting yourself to a doctor, getting yourself yep. checked out, getting onto the right insurance, that, and I see you nodding, that's in your control. But when we're overwhelmed and mm-hmm. we hit that anxiety level of 11 off the scale, we don't see any of this at all. And that's when, of course, we're going we're gonna to call mom. We're going to call girlfriend. Where's my grounding? How can I ground, you know? And I give you a lot of credit. You called your best friend. You called your therapist. Yeah. And your anxiety came down and friend came over after we talked. So you were already bringing the anxiety down a little bit enough to go, okay, I need to game plan. I think I've got a a rough outline of a game plan. How do we fill some of this in? And you were able to do that with him. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. He was kind of helped me walking through it. And then we made uh, some PBJ French toast and kind of like shot the shit for a second. And uh, it was just nice, you know, just to kind of be in. Time out. PB and J yeah. French toast. Yeah, dude. <laughs> the best French toast I've ever had in my life. It's literally just PB and sandwich French toast, but amazing. Love it. Having moments like that with him, mm-hmm. even just you and I talking about it, doesn't mean yeah. I don't feel anxious and I don't have this thing with my heart going on. It means, right. <sighs> okay, I can still live and have this. I don't have to put everything on hold while I stay in this panic state, that heightened state yeah. of alert, that fight or flight. Like, okay, we can bring the adrenal system down a little bit. I also feel extremely blessed to have somebody like Brent in my life. I think being able to appreciate that is a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. I think I've definitely been able to be aware of cool things in my life, but I don't right. think I've ever really been to appreciate what they are. Like, it's just a crazy feeling. It's a support and community, and, and it takes a village to its fight, like, to every letter. Well, yeah, there, there's something about when you're actually authentic and you're being you, and the people around you are the people that, are, uh, that feed off of that, right? And you can appreciate it in that way instead of constantly trying to prove myself or to fit in with them. It's, no, I just am. It, it's phenomenal. You're experiencing that. Bringing it back, you look good right now. I can tell there's still some anxiety for sure. You said you were at an eight, yeah. but like laughing, smiling, this is still your life. Whatever's going yeah. on, we'll get figured out. It's not in our control. The stuff that is, right. you're moving towards. I want to rewind a little bit, give you a little time here because I, I want to I dig into this. When you first called me this morning, anxiety level is 11. You had... Was it on Sunday that, that they came to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you got checked out by, by paramedics from 911 on Sunday, two days ago. Yep. And you didn't know what was happening. You knew something was wrong. And it's really super scary because you're going through something physical and you have all these people in their full uniforms and gear and like, you don't know what's happening. They, you know, hook you up to a machine, they test you and they say this. And then, then they, 20 minutes later, they're gone. And you're like, what just happened? What do I understand? And, and I think the hard part within that too, just kind of, as we're talking about it, is mm-hmm. that there are two unrelated, related events. Mm. While I was hyperventilating and that freaked me out in itself. Right. This now situation I found myself in, like, if that was all it was, like, I'd be good. Like, if it was just dehydration and hyperventilation, like, we would have wiped our hands clean, had a good laugh, and been like, damn, I'm sorry, I wasted your time. Right. And said to these guys, I was like, dude, I feel really embarrassed. I feel like I wasted your time over a panic attack. Like, I don't want to do this. And and that's when everything got kind of, like, more serious. I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. Like, this is different. And so I was like, okay. And so again, back to what you were saying, it's the yeah. unknown, it's the it's the quick demeanor change of laughing about a panic attack to, oh shit, like maybe our test thing is wrong, I hope it is. Right. And that little bit of information will get you Googling, going on WebMD, spiraling Way out. Way too much information. Right. And what you told me it was, I don't know if you remember what you first said to me. Lateral infract. 
Yeah. Yeah. Infraction. I have a yeah. heart infraction or an infraction. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Lateral infract. Right. But it's a, it, how do you say it? Infarction. Infarction. It sounds yeah. like infart. <laughs> I know. It, it, well, it's almost spelled that way. It's, it's probably, I don't know exactly what it is, but what's more common is a lateral myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. That's the term for it. You didn't have the information. They, it's overwhelming and we're freaked out. And when we're in that anxious place, I don't know what it is. And what does that mean? And then we start Googling. Then we start trying to make sense and, and we're feeding the anxiety. As soon as you said that to me, I was like, oh, I wonder if that's one of the known complications, however rare, of having COVID. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know if you told the paramedics that when they were there. Like, you know, I recently had yeah. COVID. You did. Good. And that, Well, that's why they checked my heart. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. So give and yourself some credit for like, that. Oh. Right. And it's not just a panic attack. And that's, you know, the idea of like, well, I want to err on the side of caution. This is what that means. Well, yeah. And I like, thank you for saying that. Cause I do, I do want to say that I am proud of myself for kind of speaking up in that moment yeah. of not being embarrassed about my panic attack. So I didn't want to say something more, you know what I mean? Right. Cause like, that was definitely hard for me, especially staying in front of like six big dudes that were all sitting above me while I was laying down kind of like at one of my right. most vulnerable, right. you know, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Right. Yeah. I definitely think I want to pat myself on the back a little bit there for, for doing that. Cause I think that was hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, and especially asking the question, knowing that I'm going to have a lot of unknowns in that answer. Right. Because I knew. Right. And that's so anxiety provoking and it right. just snowballs, right? And builds right. and builds. And when we step back and go, wait, hang on, how do I come up with a game plan? You can't possibly think game plan in that moment. Not possible. Right. That's why you reached out. Yeah. You did exactly what you needed to do. And yeah, when we're falling, our instinct is to grab at something to, to keep us up. Mm -hmm. We're going to grab at whatever mm -hmm. we can. Grab at parents, grab at therapists, grab at friend, grab at girlfriend. Like, yeah. Oh, do I know a doctor somewhere? Oh, yeah. My girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever we're calling her right now. Yeah. <laughs> she's got somebody in her family that, that works in the cardiac unit. Like, okay, cool. Let me call her. Let me get that. Let, of course, you did what you okay. needed to do when you felt like you were falling and needed to grab onto something. Yeah. You look and sound a lot different now than you did three hours ago. Yeah, I feel it for sure. Yeah. For sure. And maybe, maybe I lied on my eight, nine. I might be closer to a four or five. Say way, what? Way down. Yeah, way down from an eight, nine. Still, like, it's still there, you know? And if something triggers me today, I'll be right back up. I know it. But, like, right now, sitting here, you know, I'm definitely not, I'm not above five for sure. Okay. For sure. So let's recognize that. I didn't want to say anything yeah. at the moment when you said that to me. No, I know. When you said yeah. like eight, maybe You're like, nine. bullshit. <laughs> what, what, me? I wouldn't say that. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I, that's why I wanted to walk through a few more things because it's, yeah. and I could tell that your, your answer when you were like eight, nine, because what you said right after that was very telling. I can distract yeah. myself from it. So I'm not thinking right. about it, but it's right there. Right. And it, right. it was almost like as soon as I asked you to scale your anxiety and where you were, you're like, oh, right. I'm anxious. You know, you, you had that moment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. right? So, yeah. And as we walk through it a little more and we talk about it a little more. Oh, look at that. What'd you just do right there? A big old deep breath. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, as we walk through it and you go, wait a second. <sighs> Okay, you know what? I'm at a four or five. There's there's nothing I can do right now. And the things that I can do, I did this, this, and this, and I've got a game plan. I'm, okay. I still don't mm -hmm. know what's going on with my heart, and I'm going to get it checked out. Okay. So four or five. And you know what? At some point, guaranteed in the next 24 hours, it will spike to an eight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If it doesn't, I would be shocked. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's when it spikes to an eight. If we can somehow somewhere in our mind, remember, it will go back down. It's going to spike like mm -hmm. a spike just spikes for a second and goes down. You're not going to get pinned at a nine and stay there again. Right. You, know, right. you might for a few minutes, you might for a few hours. That's okay. You mm -hmm. might call mm -hmm. or text me again. Like, hey, I'm freaking out. Can you just talk me down for a second? Okay. That's using yeah. your support. Yeah. Where you are in this is a lot better than you think. That that four or five place, that's the sense that I'm getting from you versus three hours ago. Right. 
Yeah, and and I also want to shout out real quick that I don't feel like I want to say I'm at a one or a two. You know what I mean? Because like <laughs> I definitely feel, like, you know, I feel it. But I also, to your point, like I am calm. I am. It will spike. I get that. I'm okay. Nothing's drastic. You know, nothing's changing overnight. You know, right. it's okay. I'm long term, and I just kind of gotta make my bed in the morning and start there, and everything will kind of fall into place. I like how you're walking through this and we didn't need to focus too much on the anxiety of what's going on with your, with your heart, with your system. What does that mean? We did that right. a few hours ago on the phone just right, for a right. bit and you were able to lean on your other support. There's your village. Yeah. And these are people just like it was Saturday at, at Drake's, right? These <laughs> are people that are creating the village around you going, right. we see you. We're here for yeah. you. I think just to sum it all up and and I think the best way I can sum up my life right now is I'm doing a lot of really cool shit as far as like creativity and meeting people and having a lot of fun. But I think I'm getting everything that I've ever like truly wanted and experiencing those experiences with the people that I'm experiencing it with. Hmm. I feel like we've kind of put work in here over the last two years has Mm -hmm. really amplified who I am and been able to to seek out the right type of a community, my own understanding of what that is and not just kind of like free falling, grabbing for whatever. And I think that comes a lot with like boundaries and being like my mile markers and everything that correlates with what's going on throughout everything. I'm most proud of uh, the people I got around me. And I I am proud of myself. Like I really, really am. But um, I mean, it's just fucking cool to see like all my friends and family like like we are living the fast and the furious last lifestyle. I think you are having that life and you are appreciating it. And it's, it's fantastic. That's what you're creating. And it's built on, I think, authenticity, vulnerability, and trust. Yep. My pillars. Yeah, for sure. There you go. Thank you very much for today. I really appreciate it. Babe. Seriously. Of course. And we're back. Okay. So what was the technical difficulty? You know, I want to know. Oh, really? What was your technical difficulty before we were recording today? I don't know. Freaking fine. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say yours was why you were getting some sort of write error. Why were you getting a write error? And I don't know, maybe part of it had to do with you had to enter in the correct date and time before we recorded because it popped okay, up. Okay, okay. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fine. I get it. I get it now. Okay. Right. Yeah. And it was uh, the perfect example of a feather on a ton of bricks. Yeah. Which I loved that. I like yeah. bringing that reference back. And yep. he was saying like, well, it didn't make me not want to have a session, but like close. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Like, it's sort of like totally when you hit that frustration it. point and you know, I mean, we've done it before. Well, actually we did it when oh, one of the cords, one of the cables that we use was not working and we were just like, yeah. nope, forget it. Yeah. We're done. Forget it. Right. Yeah. And you brought up how your demeanor in helping him, what you were understanding, calm, and it helped right. him not get even more dysregulated, it helped him go in the other direction and actually be able to figure it out when he said like, he doesn't get that a lot when the other person also right. starts to get wound up. Right? right. And that, that's why, you know, a lot of therapists will sound uber calm when you bring mm-hmm. something to them, even though right. you might come in sometimes, or we might come in, whoever's coming in might want somebody to kind of be where we are. Like I'm mm-hmm. ramped up. Can you believe this happened? Oh my God, this person said this and this person did this. And, oh my God. And you want that energy because that's yeah. where you are. And somebody will go, oh, well, how did you feel about that? Like, I don't want to hear that. I'm ramped up. Be ramped up with me, right? But when it's not just about a relationship or, or who knows what it is, yeah, I think that kind of calm demeanor really is relaxing, really does help. And I do think that I know, I'm thinking of a specific incident where one of my best friends was all of a sudden walked into my office, fell on my floor, doubled over in pain, screaming. It ended up an appendix thing or something, but panicking, screaming. And I, and we go into the, okay, we got it. I got it. And the call 911. Okay. Right. You're going to be okay. Great. Like any, and so someone else's 
crisis or I think the instinct, well, I don't know about everyone's instinct, but is to (laughs) calm and okay. Yeah. It's sort of emotional regulation where Mm -hmm. sometimes we can't control that. Sometimes we can. I mean, I think I saw, I saw this once on one TV show or maybe one movie. Maybe you can help me out. See if it sounds familiar where the woman is pregnant and going into labor and says she's going into labor and the guy will just freak out and scramble and and try to find the the bag that they pack to go to the hospital and, and runs around like like nutty and so freaked out and the woman's just like yeah it's cool the bag's right here let's get in the car right i think that's every movie and tv show that was my point right oh <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like literally trying to figure out the name, like well, which one does he mean? Yep. Right, but that that's we have an emotional response to something. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes if the guy in that situation were like, okay, well the bag's over there, I'm gonna bring the car around. Like that would be great. Some women in that situation might be like, how come you're not freaked out? Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not happening to me. But some people will take that on. Right. Yeah. And I think your point was what's helpful when he's anxious and what's not like knowing who makes it worse and who makes it better right? and sort of avoiding. So like kind of avoiding those people that make it worse or, and, or setting the boundaries with them. Yeah. And and I love that his response to that, you know, he was really thinking about like, Oh yeah, I'm just looking for the right support that, that I need right now. Who's going to be supportive and who's not. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll hit that again in a second too. Yeah. Well, and towards the end of the session, you, you were like girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. And that's what I wrote in the beginning. Cause he was saying he was having a rough time with, with her. And right. I was like, girlfriend, right. ex-girlfriend. So I guess nobody knows what she is, including them. Well, in, in the last few weeks, what, what he and I were talking about is that he's sort of walking through how he wants to have her in his life. He's not doing what he used to do, which is I'm going to shut down, shut her out bye, And I'm not right. going to bend over backwards and fawn over her and make everything okay and invite her back in. I'm, I'm actually going to sit back and kind of go, hey, how do I want her to, to show up in my life? And how do I want to show up in hers? And really thinking about that, and sort of what he was saying in this is there were times when he did lean on her and wanted her to show up and she did kind of show up. It's sort of like what he was saying, like he was looking for some support and some help and he got that from her and that was great. Right. And then sometimes she's just been adding stress and he's like, forget it. Totally. Like holding the boundaries with her. Yeah. So you guys started talking about him reaching out to his parents or his friends or whoever with this whole right. thing that right. happened to him, which right. was the previous day, right? Or no, earlier that morning or before yeah. you talked, which was he was having a panic attack or he suddenly felt like couldn't breathe and yeah. called 911. Yep. Yep. Okay went to the hospital and it turned out it was both a panic attack maybe and lateral myocardial infraction. I had to write that down. Yeah. You wrote down what he said. It's a lateral myocardial infarction. Oh, <laughs> that's Farction. Yeah. You, you got to watch Grey's Anatomy and, and you Meredith. Wonderful. You are, you're actually mirroring what Drew said when I told him that, and I repeated that phrase back to him. Of, of what it was. And he said, yeah. sounds like fart. I'm like, yeah, it does. Uh-huh. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that it was a, a side effect of COVID or potentially, or it is. Yep. God, that is so crazy. So that happened. And I guess he reached out to his parents or called his mom and she offered to come down and he was, sounds like he set some good boundaries, which was like, no, I don't, I don't need you to come down like, but that's not the support I need from her. But right. Uh, and then she was like at the nail place and just never called him back. So fucked up. Right. What he was realizing is, oh man, I wanted my, my parents to show up and they didn't, and maybe they're not capable and maybe I, I, yeah. I don't go to them. And that's why I said to him, we're, we're talking about your family of choice, not your family of origin. Cause he's looking at who was showing up for me. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was his friends. It was his yeah. girlfriend, not girlfriend. Right. Right. And his bestie who just like came in a heartbeat. Right. Exactly. And realizing like, 
okay, maybe this is a function of growing up. They're going to be there for me in some places, in some ways, but who's right here for me right now in the way that I need right now? And that's historically for him when he's reached out to mom for that, sometimes she's messed up and she's not there. And this time she was getting her nails done and then never checked in again. And it's wild. I mean, come on. Right. That's just fucked. I mean, sure, judgment, but also what? I mean, and you said, uh, did you make this up? Or do you say, is this one of your things? Growing pains, not growing joys? (laughs) I don't know. I that's It's just what came to me. That was great. What was in my head was it's uh, it's called show business, not show friends. Oh, wow. That one I know. So growing pains, not growing joys. I, I don't know. It was know. great. It's, I yeah. don't know. It was great though. Yeah. You there said you this is really adulting. And then you yeah. talked about these four steps. Also, is this something that you, are these like your four steps that you know in your head about this to, or you just broke it down in your head? Like, oh, this is what I see you doing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much what I saw him doing, what was going on. Interesting. It, it really was like, okay, we're talking about adulting and talking about what he's going through and how he's going through it, what's helpful and what's not. And I could see in his language, he loves mile markers. Like, okay, well, if you just take this situation, what are the steps that he took in in handling this and and what he did and how he did it? Because he really did kind of go down the list of, okay, who can I call? Who can I count on? What can I do? Right. It was sort of like, all right, first thing I'm going to my mom. I mean, for him, it was actually building the awareness, like what's yeah. what's helpful to me, what's not. Great. He got it. Then asking for what you need. Cool. You right. asked for it. Okay. Then are you getting it or not getting it? Okay. And with mom, he wasn't like, okay. And then maybe that fourth step is, all right, I didn't get it. Now what? Yeah, it was impressive. I was right. like, did Doug make up these four steps? What's happening here? <laughs> well, I don't think they're four steps for everybody, but these were I know, the four steps great. of Drew. Like, oh. You know, the, yeah. these were Drew's four steps right there. And why even said like, and one of those for you classically is the shutdown version. Like, oh, well, fuck it. Right. Cross them off the list. Bye. And right. that's why girlfriend, not girlfriend. Well, what is she? This is him not doing that version where he just goes, bye. All right, I'm out. Right. Well, and yeah, and he talked about having, he talks about empathy towards other people and how, oh, everyone's going through their own shit. And I'm like, sure. And you're allowed to feel and focus on yourself too. It it doesn't have to be, yeah, of course, everyone's going through their own shit. So what? Right. It can be both. Right. Of course, what I said to that is, is, you know, it's wonderful to have empathy and you're seeing that and you're seeing this. It doesn't take away that something was missing for you. And the empathy that he can have for mom, I wanted him almost to see the empathy that he wasn't getting back from her, but the empathy that he needed. Right. Yeah. And he was saying, well, having empathy allows myself to be, to not be disappointed on the other end. And again, it's okay to be disappointed. Right. And and I I love that, that moment because he says that to me and I know what he's talking about, but I wanted to hear him break it down. I was like, okay, well, well, yeah, I know what you mean, but explain it to me. Right. And he did. And, and it was really looking at that and not, not holding something. And, and, you know, we use the language of everybody's the lead actor in their own movie. And it's, it's a way of like using the getting cut off on the road and another way of just going, right, you don't have to take it personally. Like with mom, if she's the one that cut you off on the freeway, okay, you don't have to take it personally. Yet with mom, you will because it's mom. Yeah. And he did at that point sort of talk about if you're not getting your needs met, like you need to find it somewhere, you got to find the right people. And, and he was saying he wasn't getting it from her, from the ex, not ex. (laughs) Right. And letting her know that the support he needs isn't, wasn't what she was trying to give him. And, and then it was so sad. He got tearful and emotional and talking about how his partner and his partner's wife was so sweet and so supportive. Yeah. And he just said, why do the people I love the most, like, First, he said, why do I push them away? And then he said something like, or they're not there for him or both. But I don't know, maybe he pushed them away because they're not there for you. Yeah. And part of it is, is can we lean into the people that are 
and can we lean into not just those people, but why they are, which is what I was trying to hit for him. It's sort of like you can see where the empathy is. They're having empathy because of who you are and how you are. And that was something that his business partner's wife, like, she doesn't know you. Right. I think she jumped on the phone for a second and was like, oh, how, how are you? Or what's this? He was having an insurance issue. Like, he's right. no longer on his parents' insurance because he turned 26. So what does he do? And how does he do this? And yeah. she's like really trying to go through it with them. And so like, all right, how can, how can I help? And me saying, well, why would she do that for you? He's like, I, she, I don't even know her. Right. And that's, that's where he hit that. The people that I, that are closest to me that I want to be like that are the ones that at least are showing him that they don't care. Right. There was an emotional piece that I didn't hit there. And part of why I didn't hit that is because we're, we're into a session where we're talking about anxiety and we still haven't talked about the actual heart event yet. Right. Right. What he's talking about is such a feeling of abandonment there of, I wanted my mommy. I was scared. I needed help. I called my mommy and she was getting her nails done and didn't call me back. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. So let's move to being an adult and recognizing who you are and how you are and that people like your business partner's wife will be there for you because of who you are. I loved it just because it gave you the opportunity to point out that there are good people in LA. I was <laughs> right. like, ha, right. you see, right. Drew. Well, and, and yeah, and, and not just LA, but that's where I said family of choice, not family of origin. It's, it's yeah. the people that really are there for you. And it's you, you are the constant there. And the variable might be who the people are, where they are. Like, I don't know, but the constant is who he is and, and him being a good person. And it's looking at, his bestie, as you said, you know, that would, they'd take a bullet for each other. Like, cool, no problem. Right. And that abandonment of mom is huge. And then he makes the, the link kind of, of like, oh, right. This is where I see people and this is who I want to see and who I want to be with and the life that I want to, to live. And, and then he starts talking about the party he went to. Right. But he's, it, it was so cool. Yeah. And, Again, part of why I'm going with him in this in this session is he's fresh off of anxiety being way, way up. I even asked him in a minute to scale it, right? On the yeah, one to 10. Yeah, that was so good. And this morning, like I was like, Yeah, dude, you were at eleven this morning. Right. And <laughs> I mean, I was gonna wait till you hit this because I figured you would, but I'll hit it right now. Hit it. I let him tell me about the the, the party and tell me about it was a party at Drake's house. Like, dude amazing like that's cool well are we going to talk about the party now or are we going to talk about the anxiety because no, i got a lot to say about the party okay <laughs> i'm sure you do and that's not the point but you'll get there after he goes through this and he's talking about this and doing this i knew it was like okay now his anxiety must be coming down and i asked right. him to scale it and this surprised me honestly is he said yeah i, I think i'm at an eight or a nine yeah it surprised me too i was like what right 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 and I, I just kind of let that go for a moment and yeah. just kind of went, oh, yeah. well, well, at least it ticked down a little bit. Right. right. Again, we'll, we'll jump back to the party and we'll go in chronological. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. But no, what no, was no so cool is I, I'm like, all right, well, this morning you said you were at an 11 because that was our phone call. And, and right. now you're an eight or nine. Okay, that's cool. Later in the session, he says, do you remember this? Yeah, he said, I think I, I, think I lied. I think I right. lied. It's, a, it's actually like a four or five. And I was like, right. that's fucking amazing. Right. I love that. So I love that. Cause I, I knew, yeah. I knew it was lower, but he wasn't ready to let go of that yet. Yeah. And then later he w and then he said, I just want to make it clear. It's not like it's a one or a two. Right. Right. <laughs> it's not it's like nothing. There. We're like, okay. Well, okay. And yeah. a lot of that is there's still something going on with my heart and I don't know what that is. Right. I'm still a little concerned about that. Yeah. However, I am not so anxious right now that I can't right. deal with it, that I can't deal with insurance and I can't do that. Okay, that's fine. Right. At some point he said his heart hurts and I was like, yeah. is that emotional or physical? Maybe yeah. both, but. Probably both, but I, I think yeah. I think he meant physical because it's, it's true. He was having physical heart right. pains, right? Yeah, yeah. And you were, you even said like, you can still be anxious and also like bring, bring down your adrenal system a little bit. Right. It can still be both. Right. And he was saying like, yeah, my chest literally hurts. 
And he even said like, yeah, my anxiety is cool. Like I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. But my heart hurts and I'm scared. Okay. Now we can talk about it. Right. Just so sweet. When he was talking about the paramedics being there and he's like, there's like all these big dudes all around me. And it's like, I was very proud of myself <laughs> right. for, for mentioning my panic attacks. Right. I was like, Oh, me too. Right. Cause he was probably like, uh, I think I'm just maybe having a panic attack and really like not did something wrong with your heart. Another thing that he told me that I thought was really cool when he was talking about all those paramedics sitting around him is that he was worried about wasting their time. And there's something Aww. about like putting on that, that bravado of like, Oh, there's all these like big strapping EMTs or parent, whoever it was that showed up. And he's like, yeah, sorry. I wasted your time. It's just a panic attack. No problem. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, and he was saying yeah. like, he said, he even said to them, I feel really embarrassed. I feel like I wasted your time. He's laughing about it. Oh, it's just a panic attack. Okay, whatever. Right. I hear that. And I'm, I'm starting to get a little worried for him of like, hey, dude, you just had COVID. Did you tell them you had COVID? And he's right. like, yeah, yeah, no, I did. That's why they checked my heart. Because it was, mm. if it was just a panic attack, okay, fine. Panic attack. Here, here's an Ativan. You'll chill right. out. You'll, you'll be fine. But having him say, oh, yeah, I, I recently had COVID. Then they check his heart. And, the, and he, on the phone call to me this morning, he did tell me that much. And he said, yeah. And they were like, oh, let's check the machine again. That's not right. And they, they literally had to like check him. And that's why they were saying you need to see a cardiologist because they were, they were looking at the readouts and like, yeah, this says you have a, a myocardial infarction. Like, huh. So that's serious. And that is a, a potential side effect of COVID. Okay. It's somewhat rare, but it happens. For him, a freshly turned 26-year-old that has a oh, heart yeah. attack, that's gnarly. That's really gnarly. Wait, he Not, had a heart attack? That's what that means. Yeah. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure you watch Grey's Anatomy? Wait, he had a heart attack? Yeah. Next time you watch Grey's Anatomy, you need to pay attention to what they say is happening medically and see what's going on. A myocardial infarction is when your heart, the heart is not getting enough oxygen and, and blood flow is blocked. That's also called a heart attack. Wait, he had a heart attack and was already back home the same day? Yeah. I felt like heart attacks were a bigger deal. No? It depends. We don't have to get all medical here because that's not what we do. But there are, <laughs> there are different effects of a heart attack and what you're left with. And it, it could have been a lot more serious. Okay. But yes, he had a heart attack. That's it. Wow. Myocardial infarction is, is the fancy term for what that is. And I could see you're Googling that right now, right? I am. <laughs> oh, Drew. Yeah. yeah. And that's where like, I kind of went, whoa, wait a second. 26 years old, you got COVID, you recovered, and then you had a heart attack, you, which you think is a panic attack. Here's the thing where I get a little worked up and you probably didn't hear it in this session at all, but I'm kind of going, where the fuck are your parents? Like that pissed me off. You guys yeah. listening have no idea that I have that reaction, but that is absolutely yeah. my reaction. I don't show right. that to him because it's not useful for his therapy. However, I will kind of push at that and poke at that a little bit Yeah. in subsequent sessions. Maybe I will. But that, that idea of like, dude, even your face, Mary, when you were like, Oh, lateral myocardial infarction. Okay. What is that? At right. least it wasn't a heart attack. No, that is a heart attack. And your face just went, what? Right. Like yeah. insane, insane then. And so his mom already knew that when she never called him back. Yeah. Oh my. Wow. Right. I would have that same reaction with my client because I would let them know like, yeah, that's not okay. And your feelings are valid. Yeah. It's fucked up. Right. And for me personally, anxiety for me would probably stay at an eight or nine until I saw a cardiologist. He's yeah. different. And I loved again, when, when he said like, oh, after the Drake story, oh, where, where's your anxiety level now? And he's like, oh, eight or nine. Later when we revisit, when he told me it was really a 405, it was funny because he. I said, yeah, when you first told me it was an eight or a nine, he goes, yeah, you were like bullshit. I'm like, what? <laughs> me? What? 
And <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you know, I was just going with it, but he could tell. My right. face kind of gives it away. Right. I like that we got to a place where he could take a breath, calm it down, bring it down, and be yeah. okay. Stay at a four or five, like you said, not a one or a two. Okay. And now we can kind of deal with what this is. And there might be different spikes and, and that might happen. Yeah. But we yeah. actively in this session might not have seemed like it, but we walked through processing anxiety in real time with him. Yeah, it was great. He was able to even get to that place where he said, okay, so like talking about something good and you could just like feel the anxiety really that had already released some. Right. You know, I think he has a little more releasing to do and a little leaning into family of choice here, which he is doing. It's cool to see. And there is some more separation with family of origin that's happening or individuation, as we say in our biz. Right. It's cool to hear. In fact, <laughs> you guys that are listening to this will hear in a couple of weeks. I believe we will be processing more of this and Meredith will step aside so I can be joined by famed therapist extraordinaire, my mom. So excited <laughs> to hear that. That was amazing. It's funny. I, I called I called my mom. I was like, okay, I think I got one you can do with me, Ma. And she's like, oh, really? Is it one that has to do with his mom? Like, um, yeah, probably a little bit. <laughs> she, she knows she knows what she's getting into. I'm like, don't uh, don't worry, uh -huh. mom. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. So good. It'll be interesting to break down, for lack of a better way to say it, Drew's mommy issues with my mommy. <laughs> yep. That will be so good. Right? Well, I was going to bring up the party, but I feel like it's not appropriate now because I was kind of gonna drill Drew a little bit. And now I feel like we've wrapped it up and it, he's did so great. I don't know that I want to be hard on him. Ain't no party like a Drake party. Wait, a myopardial infarction? Oh, uh, my God. Hey. <laughs> nope, that was it. You got it. There you go. There we go. And on that Slim note, bunk. boom, we are out. <laughs> we are. Bye. Bye. Maybe someday. Maybe someday.